welcome back to What Are Tea Nibs with General Disturbance. Today is the first day that I've been playing RT solidly since the uh, changes were made to the 1.13. At the moment, I'm in my griller, the Tier 5 German SPG. I'm located on the northeast spawn of Live Oaks, and it's my game on the NA server. This is the biggest stickers account. Now, if you remember, the last time I played this RT was only actually a, a day or so ago. And the first time I played it, I went from, um, I think it was first mark, straight away through the second mark. And I was just underneath the third mark before um, I put it away and said, OK, well, something's obviously wrong. And I'm not the only one who's noticed this. In fact, a lot of players are actually getting marks of excellence which they've been struggling to get up until now, but all of a sudden they seem to be easy. As you can see, I'm aiming towards the uh, enemy tanks coming into the town. There's a whole bunch of them. Chaffee, M4A1, all desperate to get to the houses as quickly as they can before they get wiped out. Okay, well that M4A1 looks like he's moving further inland. And, oh! Okay, we see a chappy. He's decided to go out to the houses again and sit there, round out. Well, it stunned him. See those big traces from the RT shells? We've got a T-52's decided to go through this row of houses. There's a whole bunch of tanks in there. Super chappy, a chappy. And yeah, unfortunately that didn't work out too well for him. But there are a number of other tanks in the town, and we can see the enemy is trying to focus on some of the tanks that have been spotted. Going for the M4A1, dialing in, let it settle, rounds out, direct hit! And he's out the game for 393 hit points. That was a direct hit and a pennon. The alpha of this RT is 480. So that was obviously a low roll pen, but that's all the hit points he had left at the end of that game. Got a chaffy! Now, are you going to sit still for me, or do I have to be nasty about it and lead you? That's up. Yeah, he decided to move. And as a consequence, I had to try a leading shot, but it didn't work. But now we've got a Wolverine. Now, they're very thin on armor. Very thin indeed. So if I can put a shell directly on top of him, he'll probably go bang. Here we go. Grabs out. He moves. But he takes the shell anyway, and that's the end of him. So, I've got two kills now. Now, I'm not playing RT any differently than I played before. You notice I accidentally hit the wrong key. I actually moved forwards accidentally during that encounter. And in fact, there's a large group of enemy tanks headed this way. And they're coming up the railway line, so I need to get out of here quick. Otherwise, I'm going to be dead very, very shortly. I'm afraid there's no point in sticking around to save your colleagues if you recognize that there's a serious possibility your colleagues will fall and then you will be the next one to fall after that. Recognize the situation that's bad and pull back as quickly as you can. In fact, I'm not the only one who says this. Klaus Kellerman recommends it as well. He says sometimes you just have to fall back all the way to your uh, cap and start all over again. And you can see that most of the tanks that were guarding our cap area have fallen. In fact, there's only one left, and he's just died. So, yep, it was a smart move to uh, go to the town, because if I'd stayed at the cap, I would have been the next one to die. Well, I'm going to sit here next to these bushes and shoot back at the, uh, the railway station, because obviously one of the enemy tanks is still there. Okay, we've gone to aim. We see a chaffy. Let's see if I can dial in on him first. Oh, before I can even get a shot, my teammates in the VK301P takes him out of the game. Okay, we've got a Wolverine. Now, can I take this one out as well? He's very low on hit points. Grabs out. No, he dies before I can even get a shot in. Over by the runway station, though, we've got a T3485M, the premium version of that tank. Very popular medium tank, that one. It's a very good tank as well. Okay, right, line him up, round out, and yeah, he took a big hit there. 
236, he came back forward again and he's been wiped out. So good job I didn't stay at the railway station because I would have been dead by now. Now I noticed that there's an enemy griller but he's outside range so I can't get a shot on him so I'm going to have to move. Another tank has made his way into the cap circle. But I can't shoot from this position at the moment because the buildings are in the way so I'm going to move a little further south. And now there's two enemy tanks in the cap circle. So it appears that two of the enemy tanks, probably their heavies, actually made their way towards our cap circle. We've got two tanks nearby, a Sherman and a 40 TP. All they need to do is spot them for me. And there they are, and they're sitting next door to each other. A T1 heavy and a P43. And my shell goes in and strikes both of them and stuns them both. And I am picking up stun assist. Now we've reset the cap and we are capping at the rim with two as well. So if I get one more reset, there's no way these two can win. Rounds out. And another double hit. So I picked up more stun assist and also some uh, cap reduction points. The P43 Beers has been wiped out. So it's only the T1 Heavy now. And we're certain to win this one because we are capping at the other end with three... I can't see the T1 Heavy, but I don't need to see him because we have now won. So that's the first game. Um, let's have a look at the next one. The second game is in the M12, the Tier 7 American SPG. I'm on exactly the same map in exactly the same spawn, and it's exactly the same player. Bigger stickers. Well, that is my NA server name. Okay, game on and we've started now i've got 155 millimeter howitzer in this one and i'm going to take it behind the railway yard to start off with don't always do this but uh, i feel that i might be better off actually picking a spot somewhere near here just in case i need to make a hurry escape okay we're ready to go and i'm aiming towards the enemy Okay, that's better. No sign of the enemy yet, but I expect to see some going across the field. I'm looking for signs of destruction. I just saw some fences go down to the left. So I know somebody's crossing that field at this very moment, but we haven't got any eyes out there to tell us who's actually doing it. Yep, we're seeing some more destruction now by the houses. A bale just went over, or is that um, a cart? Another bale went down, so there are multiple enemy tanks out there. Okay, we saw a Hellcat and a 45 TP. I'm trying to line up a shot with the 45 TP, but he is still moving. And he's not moving very certainly, so I'll, I'll lay a shell down there in his path. Oh, it looks like I wasn't the only one who was looking at him at the time. And I'm changing position to avoid the cow's battery. Okay, we seem to have a T3485M on our team who's hiding near the cap. Okay, where are the enemy? I was just trying to actually get a better picture there. Okay, we've got the Crusader hiding behind that house. I can probably stun him a bit. But um, I noticed the Super Hellcat and the... Uh, KV-122, the Super Hellcat's gone down. And now I've got a Tiger 2 and a 45 TP. I'm going to go for the Tiger 1. Thumbs up. I, did I say Tiger 2? No, I meant Tiger 1. Okay, nothing from that one. I am moving whilst I'm still in aim view. All I need to do is press the W key and move forward. Change my position a little. 45 TP goes down. So he's out of the game. We're two tanks up on the enemy at the moment. And there's the KB-122. A Cromwell comes into sight and he's rushing into town as fast as he can. That's up. Well, that was near him, but it didn't get close enough to actually do any stun. Okay, pulling back. Can't see anything. And I just, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed there's an enemy tank only a few meters away, and it's a Hellcat. 
and he just fired at me and missed. Okay, so I'm going to change position. I don't have to move too far though, I can just sit around here. I don't want to move to town exactly just yet. Looks like there are enemy tanks or uh, enemy RT firing on the town. KV-122 dialing in and he's gone. Okay, we've got a Panther M10. Rounds out. Yep, splashed him for 196. Moving back a bit, change position. Looking around, that Crusader could get rather close to me. So I'm going to go into this little area here where I've got the buildings for cover. Okay, that's much better. Can't get a shot on the Crusader at the moment. He's over the hill. Okay, what have we got over here? Ah, oh, there's that Panther M10. This time he's tracked. Somebody's already got at him. Now, can I put another round into him? I think it might be the IS. Rounds out. 232 hit points this time. Oops, accidentally knocked down some of the building. I feel the need to get behind something solid, uh, another building. Okay, we've got an SU-100. Little way outside town, but he's stationary, so I'm going to dial in and fire around in that direction. Rounds out. Well, it looks like the SU-100 might have moved. Okay, can I find another target? There's that Tiger 1 again. Let's see if I can put a round in him. The Panther M10 just died. And yes, the Tiger appears to be dueling with the IS. Rounds out. Direct hit again for 216. KV2 is coming up behind the Tiger 1. I don't think he rec recognises that. And unfortunately, he pays for it because he gets wiped out. Okay, we've got a P43 Biz. Now, is he going to move past that gap? I think he's going for that gap. Line him up. And... There. Bounce out. Yep. I got some hit points off him, but only seven. But it tracked him and it held him in place. And all the team are now turning up to finish him off. And he's gone. So, it looks like we've won the town. But we do have an enemy tanker, Jackson, coming up the railway tracks. And I reckon I'm only going to get one shot at him before I have to move. He stopped. That's out. And it goes long. And explodes harmlessly behind him. So, I think I'm going to have to move. I can't stay here. If he gets too close, then I'm going to be the next victim. And as you know, I learned very early on that if you are in a hopeless position like this, move, keep yourself alive, and then hopefully you'll be able to do something about it. Yep, our T3485M is now face-hugging him, and I've got no shot. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do something naughty, actually. I'm going to fire, but not at the T3485M, at the side of the Jackson. Let's hope that works. If it doesn't, I'm going to stun my own teammate. The Super Hellcat dies against the side. And nope, I don't actually damage anyone there. And the Jackson did kill the T-34-85, so there's nobody between him and me now. So I need to get out of here as quickly as I can. So I'm doing exactly the same as I did on the previous game. Going to town. Hopefully he won't get up to the railway station fast enough to recognise that uh, I'm actually on the route to town. Now you may notice that I've only got one mark of excellence on the barrel of the gun. I did manage to get up to, I think it was about uh, 65, 70, something like 70%. So I'm, I'm fairly close to getting my second mark. As I said, these uh, replays are showing that the marks are falling very, very rapidly. Okay, we've got a couple of tanks coming back to cover the cap. 45 TP and an IS. In the meantime, I'm moving a bit further south so that I can attack the Jackson if necessary. Okay, that should do it. And I'm taking aim. 
Now, initially, I started looking around the railway tracks, but I suspected that he probably actually moved behind the buildings, behind the station, and possibly was looking for me. And yes, I think he was following my route, because there he is. He's the other side of the road. That was a little late, that shot. In fact, a lot late. We are attack capping at the other end, and the Jacksons just killed our IS. Okay, our friend in the 45 TP didn't like that, but he's just taken another 90 millimeter round from the Jackson. And despite the fact that he puts a round into the Jackson, the Jackson finishes him off. And then I finish off the Jackson. <laughs> and that is the end of the game. So let's have a look at the end of battle results for both games. Well, this is the surprising result in that uh, first game in the Griller. I managed to get my second mark of excellence, second class tanker rather, and my third mark of excellence on the Griller. Yes, I took it from a two marker into a three marker in one fell swoop. And uh, I also, that was the first game rather that I played on the Griller since that uh, previous game where I got the two marker. So I'm obviously my standard is actually much higher now than the average standard from other players. I also got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in that game. And I think, according to this, it says that I got three critical hits, which is a bit surprising. So I'm not sure why I got a bruiser medal out of that, because I should have got a bruiser only off five critical hits. Anyway, um, let's have a look at the team score and see where I managed to get. I didn't get the highest damage in the game. That went to the T3485M on the enemy team with 1,359 hit points, but he didn't get a high calibre because it wasn't 20% of the enemy hit pool. The second highest damage was our VK3001P. He got 1,341, and I managed to get 1,266, and that put me in third place on damage. When it came to kills, the high scorer was that T3485M. He got four kills. Two kills went to the VK3001P, myself, the 40TP and the T34, who also managed to get a Pascucci medal in that game. And when it came to base XP, it was me. I was in third place because the VK got the top with 650. The second place was the Wolverine with 605. And I managed to get third place, 584. And uh, yes, I know it says Vader on there, but uh, yes, I was anonymized and I am playing anonymized at the moment because I think some people are picking up and who I actually am from either from the channel or people just know that that name is synonymous with what RT Nibs. Anyway, if we look at the uh, detail report, we can see I fired nine rounds only, got five direct hits, two penetrations and seven splash. Damage of 1,266 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage five of the enemy, killed two, and did 383 hit points of stun assist off seven stuns. And I got 46 uh, defense points when I reset the cap. On a premium count, I earned 29,327 credits. And after resupply of ammunition, took away 24,782 credits. I got 25 bonds from that battle. And 876 XP, 438 for this personal reserves, and took away 1,314 experience points altogether. So not bad, uh, a fairly reasonable or average game from my own perspective in the Griller. But it was a third mark game, which means obviously now three rings on the barrel, and it's gone purple. So let's have a look at the second game. That was the M12 game, and that's another third mark game, yes, and another second class tanker, would you believe it as well? Um, yep, third mark game and another bruiser medal. And this time round, I only got four bruises at four critical hits, but I still managed to get a bruiser. My winning from this one was 1060. If you remember the previous game, that was 3782. So that was more super unicum standard. But in the M12 game, it wasn't particularly great game, but it still managed to tip it over. And I think it was already on two marks. So uh, the third mark was relatively uh, easy for me to get. If we look at the detail and the team scores, we can see that I didn't get the highest damage in the game. That was the KB2 who got 2,000, was it two? Oh, it wasn't him, it was the Jackson, sorry. The last one I killed. Uh, he got 2,332, the KB2 got 2,233, and then our 45 TP who also managed to get a Confederate got 2,127. 
I was quite a little way down the table actually with only 809 hit points out of that game. The Type 64 also managed to get a Pescucci's in that game as well. When it came to kills, it was the Jackson who did the best with six kills, so he got a top gun for that game. And then it's our Type 64 who managed to get four kills. Three kills went to the KB2. I ended up with um, only one kill, but um, I was beaten by the 45 TP and the Tiger 1 on our team. Uh, the SU-14 won on the enemy team. He managed to get a Confederate, so obviously he was playing the game and playing and working hard, but just, just couldn't get enough kills to make it the difference and help his team win. When it came to base XP, it was KB2 did the best with 1018, the Type 64 866, the 45 TP got 851, and I'm a little way down the table, um, in actually in sixth place overall on my team with 678, but I beat all the players but the Jackson on that team, so uh, it puts me on seventh place overall for the battle. 12 shots fired in this game, 2 direct hits, no penetrations but 7 splash. Damage of 809 hit points, which is quite low for me, um, and that's all at more than 300 meters. I damaged 5 of the enemy, killed 1, did 1,355 hit points of stun assist off 6 stuns. I think the stun actually helped me in this game. On a premium counter, I earned 30,695 credits. Got 65,000 for completing a mission or event. I think that's more than one mission I actually completed in one fell swoop. And a total of 95,695 credits altogether. After ammunition resupply, and yes, standard ammo use being used, no, uh, um, none of the, the premium uh, ammo being used. At least I don't think I used any premium. Uh, 83,375 credits profit overall. 1,017 XP times 2 for the first victory. 508 for personal reserves. Took away 2,542 experience points altogether. So yet another mark of excellence goes down. That's two marks of excellence today. In fact, actually, it's more than two because I actually got three marks of excellence when I logged on earlier today at, uh, I think it was... Um, 10 minutes past 5 in the morning, yes I was, I was an early bird today, and uh, I logged on, I played about 4 or 5 games, but in 3 games in succession I picked up 3 marks of excellence on that account, so it just goes to show that the marks of excellence are really affected by this 1.13 update, and a lot of players are suddenly picking up marks where they didn't have them before, and I think a lot of very grateful because obviously it's nice that if you've been struggling for so long to get your third mark and you've been putting the work in, but it just never clicked over. And it suggests to me, as others have suggested, that maybe the good players who were previously playing RT have now stopped playing RT. And the only people who are playing are the fairly bad players and, of course, those who are still who are reasonably good and are still in the game like myself and the other members of what RT noobs and they're picking up marks of excellence like uh, well they're dropping all over the place you might say i will be doing another of these videos shortly which shows that even more of my marks of excellence which are falling and so you'll actually see that yes it's not a freak event i'm actually picking them up all over so I hope you enjoyed that, and if you did, please give this video a like, do subscribe to our channel, leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.